because they're not doing what they're supposed to do. They know they were supposed to give 50, but they only gave 25. They know they were supposed to be there at 9, um, but they didn't show up to 10. See, they were not like in position like they were supposed to. So now they're frustrated. Why? Because that is conviction. That's what that is. So do not confuse conviction with spiritual warfare. Lord, help me this morning. Please, God, Lord, please, Lord Jesus, help me. Do not confuse conviction, y'all, with spiritual warfare. Lord, help me. We be confusing conviction with spiritual warfare. No, if you're not doing it as the Spirit of the Lord has instructed for you to do, that's conviction. That has nothing to do with spiritual warfare. Spiritual warfare is something that we find ourselves in because it is trying to prohibit us from obtaining something that God desires that we obtain. So don't get it confused. Don't get it twisted. So if the Lord is convicting you because of something that you're not carrying out like you should, then just go right on ahead and fix that stuff. Go on right ahead and repent and straighten it out. Now, don't be talking about spiritual warfare. No, you're not. You're in conviction. That's what you're in. You're in conviction. Get it right, Lord. Help us, please. Uh, let's go to number three now. Verse two that I just gave you, signs of spiritual warfare. The first one was there will be a lack of spiritual passion. You're not going to want to do things that you used to do anymore. Lack of spiritual passion. Uh, you know, extreme frustration, God help me, was number two. Extreme frustration. Uh, Moses, would you speak to the rock? No, I'm going to smoke the rock. Extreme frustration. Number three. Number three side of spiritual warfare. How do I know when I am in spiritual warfare? There is going to be confusion about my purpose. Please. Uh, don't miss it. There is going to be confusion about my purpose. I'm going to now be confused as to why I was even put here. Mm. I'm going to say things like, I don't even know why I'm here. I, I mean, I, 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 don't, I don't even know. I don't know why I'm here. Uh, it, you know, I don't know. I don't know. Your answer is going to be, I don't know for everything. When questions be asked to you, you're going to be saying, I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. Because it has suspended you in a place of confusion. Uh, Holy Ghost, come on, let's go this morning. It's going to get real, real in here this morning, y'all. I'm going to tell you now. It's, uh, it's going to get real, real, but it's going to be good. It's going to help your life if you will listen. And if you will receive, it's going to help your life. Uh, anytime someone is caught up in spiritual warfare, it brings about a state of confusion. Uh, that's what the enemy is going to do. He's going to confuse use the mind because the battle is being fought lord help me in the mind uh, the war is being waged in the mind so it's going to be uh confusion is going to take place whereas at one point when i was not in a, a state of spiritual warfare I, I i was so solid on my purpose uh, oh yeah i know i'm supposed to be with the children i already know the lord done called me to teach the children oh you can't tell me that the Lord hadn't called me to be the usher. Oh, you can't tell me that the Lord has not called me to be over the hospitality crew. Oh, you cannot tell me that the Lord hadn't called me for me to have this soup kitchen for me to head it up. You can't tell me. I know, honey, because that's my purpose. That's just what I desire. Oh, that's my passion, honey. I love it. Yes, I do. You can't tell me, but when people go into spiritual warfare, you will catch them walking away and see them walking away from things that God has called them to. God help me please. Things that they once had a love for, you will see them walk away from it. And they will use lies such as this is not the season that I'm supposed to do. No, you don't know how to navigate through warfare. You don't know how to cause yourself to get through the battle. You're about to cave in in. Jesus help me. 
You're about to lose heart, Lord, help me. Please, God, you're about to lose heart. So you're about to now cave in and you're about to lose. You're about to forfeit. God, help me this morning, please. You're about to forfeit something that God has for you. This is what happens when you are in spiritual warfare. And you, God, help me. This is what goes on when the enemy is breathing down your neck and he's trying to stop you from getting to that next place, trying to keep you from one of the greatest breakthroughs that you have ever experienced in your life. So he does these things. Lord, help me, please. There is confusion about what you are purposed to do. Let's see if we can grab us a scripture for that one. Let's see if we can go now to 1 Corinthians. 1 Corinthians. And let's go over to chapter 14. 1 Corinthians chapter 14. Hallelujah. 1 Corinthians chapter 14. Let's see. Oh, boy, I didn't spell it right. Hold on just one second, y'all. I, I thought it would have let me shorthand that. I thought it might have let me shorthand it, but it wouldn't let me do it. Hold on one second because I got several different things cooking on my eye right now. 1 Corinthians. Uh, you're going to let me shorthand it. I'm going to make you let me shorthand it. 1 Corinthians chapter 14, and I read from the King James Version just so that y'all know. 1 Corinthians chapter 14, let me grab, let's go down here to verse 33. Let's tie this one to verse 33 here. Uh, Verse 33, 1 Corinthians chapter 14, it says this, For God, for God, for God, for God, for God is not the author of confusion, which means he didn't write the book on confusion. He did not set confusion into into position. It says, for God is not the author of confusion, but of peace. But of peace. As in all, I need y'all to make sure you get this last part because the Lord told me to make sure that I express or elaborate on this last part. It says, for God is not the author of confusion, but of peace. The last part is what makes the major difference. But we have tend to hinge ourselves on the first part where it says God is not the author of confusion. And that's what you will hear us quote a lot. But I want to take your attention or draw your attention to the last part. It says this right here, as in all churches of the saints. Uh, Listen, he's after, look at the location as to where the enemy is attempting to fight. Look at the location where the enemy wants to put the battle. Be clearly, that's the reason why when you read the word of the Lord, you don't need to be rushing through it. You need to take your time and chew on it and dissect and grab a hold of what is actually being said. It is so misunderstood because it's not hard, but it is misunderstood because it causes the mind to think. You cannot have God or serve God and not be a thinker. He will go into your psyche, into the membrane. He gets into the cerebral cortex. He gets into those things and begin to deal with the mind to open up or to expand, to bring into thought those things because everything that happened began in the mind as a thought and then there was action put to it. And so look at what he says here, 1 Corinthians 4 and verse 33, he starts out by saying that God is not the author of confusion, but of peace, as in all churches of the saints. So he's letting us know that the battle is going to be in the church. That is where the confusion is going to come about. It's because it wants to sit on the throne inside of the church. It wants to cause a disreparency. Father, help me this this morning. It wants to cause a disreparency inside of the church. God help me please. That's where it wants the battle to be Lord Jesus. Because if God is not the author of confusion in the place that he has established but we can bring confusion into the place that God has established. He's not the author of it but we as people can bring confusion because confusion attaches itself to us 
when we are in a state of spiritual warfare. Uh, if you are struggling in spiritual warfare, there is automatically going to be a state of confusion. Don't you hurt yourself this morning, Delphine. There's going to be a state of confusion when you are caught up in spiritual warfare. No if ands, or buts about it. There is no way that you could be in spiritual warfare, real spiritual warfare, and you not be uh, struggling with a spirit of confusion. So once you identify that you are in spiritual warfare, can I give you a place of safety? Huh? Can I give you a word of wisdom? If you would hear me this morning, go get yourself and sit yourself right up under who the Lord has called you to be subject to. Put yourself right up under their care. Ride them people like you never rode them before. Sit your butt right down upon them as a student and be hid in that secret place. Because if not, what the enemy is going to do because of the realm of confusion, the first place he's going to hit you is with the one you're supposed to be safe with. He's going to cause confusion to hit your mind with the one that you are supposed to be safe with. Lord, help me this morning. He's going to cause you to withdraw, retreat, uh, draw back, uh, uh, get confused, all discombobulated, disoriented in your mind concerning the place that you're supposed to be safe. Uh, and so Paul, when he wrote this to them, he was clearly telling them, listen, uh, don't you allow no confusion. God help me. Don't you allow no confusion to get up in the house. Don't you do it. Don't you allow no confusion. If it's going to be confusion anywhere, make sure you keep it out there. Don't you let it get in my house. Uh, um, because, oh, Lord have mercy. Uh, because when it spreads, Jesus Christ, uh, it contaminates so much stuff. God, uh, Lord, help me this morning. I promise to do your will. I'm going to do it, but God, let me calm down. Uh, oh, my God, please let me calm down, God. Uh, Lord have mercy. Let's get on to the next one, y'all. Jesus Christ. Uh, intercessors unite. Uh, intercessors unite. Uh, in the name of Jesus, God, I thank you. Let's get to the next one here. Lack of peace, number four. Lack of peace. Lack of peace. Let me give a rundown for those that are just coming in. I'm giving signs of spiritual warfare. This is one you're going to want to save. This is one video you're going to want to save. Signs of spiritual warfare. It's on my podcast, too. I, I put all that up after, uh, so y'all can catch that. I'm going to give Sharika the information to start typing that in uh, um, so y'all will have the information because I always put my stuff on my podcast so y'all will be able to go back to listen to it. This is one message. God, I done got hot up in him. Lord have mercy. Uh, uh, I'm like Nelly this morning. And it, it's getting hot in here. But don't worry. I ain't going to take off all my clothes. Oh, but Lord have mercy. Jesus, signs of spiritual warfare. Number one is there's going to be a lack of spiritual passion. Number two, there's going to be extreme frustration. Number three, there's going to be confusion about purpose. I don't know. I don't know if I'm supposed to be doing that. I don't know if the Lord really called me to do that. I don't no, it's going to be confusion about purpose. Number four, there's going to be a lack of peace, a lack of peace, lack of peace. There's going to be a lack of peace. We're going to grab scripture for that from Philippians chapter four, lack of peace, a lack of peace. Whenever you are in a state of spiritual warfare, there's going to be a lack of peace. Philippians chapter 4 and verse 7. That is the text we're going to use for that. This is what it says in verse 7. It says, and the peace of God, the peace of God, the peace of God, the peace of God, the peace, P-E-A-C-E, the peace of God, which passeth all understanding, which means... Passive all understanding means, y'all, that when an element of confusion has come my way, the peace of God is going to grab a hold of me. It is going to stabilize. It's going to anchor me when there has been something to knock me off my rocker. The peace of God is going to get me whenever there is something that in my natural mind, I would say, I don't know how I'm surviving this. Woo, I sure, Lord, I would have thought I would have been lost my mind now. That is when you know the peace of God, the shalom, 
S-H-A-L-O-M. The shalom of God has stepped in on the scene. So Philippians says, and the peace of God, which passes all understanding, my mentality can only stand understand to so such a degree. But his peace takes me beyond what my mind can fathom. Shall God shall keep your hearts and mind through Christ Jesus is what it says. It shall keep your hearts and minds through Christ Jesus. So,